and welcome back to Dream Daddy. We are about to spill this throw up puke speech thing that she did in the back of a hot topic. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic movement. Sorry, it bothered me that it says and historic. I don't know if that's grammatically correct, but it sounds weird. Uh, thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a historic movement that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Godkin had too much blue raspberry slushy on an out outing to the mall. Oh. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond, it's hot topic, shut up, to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up <laughs> all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Hmm. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Thank you. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed that speech. Right. Oh, hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in Dead Goth and Beyond. Uh, look at ironic mugs. I'm suddenly stricken for... Uh, sorry. I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? This whole time I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. Oh, okay, hello there. Wow, you're weird. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An old gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that don't know what to tell you dude I just work here what what listen when I bought this online the website said that said this blouse was Victorian inspired however when I received it it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage do you want a coupon I can give you a coupon will you leave I give you a coupon is there a manager present people have to know what they're buying I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Hey, Dadtron5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. You said, you said that you would buy her a thing by coming to this mall. Well, that was easy, thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt under the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her... Her eyes so hard, I'm worried she'll pull something. <gasps> That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. Amanda hands her a bag. Oh, she hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, cool. Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hauling, they're hunting ghosts. Mm -hmm. Also, the trucks are haunted. Sounds amazing. I have to see this. This is an episode I've already seen, but <clears throat> it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving 
the, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghost done got control of the truck! I can't steer on them their damn ice roads! Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits! Flint, we're about to die! Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. Mm -hmm. That's because we're about to die, you. Yeah. This is art. <laughs> the episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Morning. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, you excited for the cookout today? Uh, if there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Huh? Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Hmm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Eh? Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Hmm. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Whoa. What? No. We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cocktail on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Hmm. I guess we're not as early as we thought. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I see our veggie plate. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. Oh, we have to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Why do you have to say things like that? Why do you have to say that? Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies! Hmm. Let me introduce you to the family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. Hi. Wait. Did, did Chris just say hi like that? I hope you guys heard that, because that was definitely an adult that just said hi. Hi. Oh. This is Christian and Christy, they're twins. Hey. They stare creepily and say nothing. Hi. Then, of course, there is our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh, God, no, that's a bitch. Oh, no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh. Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Ah. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? Uh? I'll have to go look for him. Mm. What? You'll have to... Joseph takes a moment to regain his composure. <laughs> Mary, this is our new neighbor, Mark, and his daughter, Amanda. Mm. I jerk your hand, but I, I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to, uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all the energy, not, it takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. My man and I mill around and try some of the food spread, spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate 
and immediately begins piling with base piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Ugh. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? I don't want to have to. T <laughs> but I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Huh. Dad. Ah. Uh, they're gonna talk about weather. Ugh. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. Yeah. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around at the party and am surprised to see fami some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Yeah, his name's Matt. Oh dang, Robert's here. I don't like Robert. Robert was an asshole. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Yeah, he's got a dog. Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. And River. Wait a second. All these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I, I'd better investigate. Uh, burger time! Fuck talking to people! Oh. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. Hmm. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. After, one after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. You probably didn't know this, Mark, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. Yeah. yeah. He's ungrillievable. Oh, God. Hey. I've tried to get on his level, but I can't catch up. Fuck. Hey. Let us be studying. He has a rare quality about him. Hmm. <laughs> Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? I'm sorry, I have voices for like two people. Everybody else has my voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've never seen him make a mistake. Oh. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. <laughs> Please stop! <laughs> that a girl. All the children at the party boo the glori glorious display of puns in unison. Yeah. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Oh. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Oh. Kind of nice, isn't it? I feel like there, there's a real community here. It totally helps when you, you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're just happy to hear you. Have you here, man? I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all of the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Hmm. I swear to God. I swear to God. I... Twice. Two episodes in a row. It's my cat, everybody. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? Dad Book? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Oh. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. <laughs> don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Sita and all those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. <laughs> Pretty fun party, don't you think? Uh, I mean, I got a burger in me. Sweetie, if I can impart any sort of wisdom upon you right now, and not that this was a bad situation, but if you're, if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. The silver linings get you through to the other side. We 
we ate Rockenbergs today. Fuck. And it was good. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadbook. Maybe I will if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Huh. Man and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for the evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Dad. You're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No. I've never done that and I never will do that. Hmm. Okay. Do you have any plans for tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... See how long I can sleep for. I'm kind of tapped out. But the sun hasn't even gone down yet. Bullshit. You can, you can clearly see that it is dark. I see stars. Whoa, whoa! What is this guy? Who's this dude? I like him. Sorry, sidetracked. Anyways, I still have sleep to catch up on from when you were a baby. Just let me be. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. Watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that, although if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, and but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. <laughs> I'm not sure what that one was about, but it was just a lot of yelling. Glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in on Amanda. I send a text. Hey kiddo, you good? Wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case, she, yeah, I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab some ice. I grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Okay, see now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. This episode, the episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meet Hell are not only not assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling. So I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going, who she was going with? Why don't I even know any of her friends phone numbers why don't I even know any of her friends full names who is Emma P I decide to send her another text Amanda please text me and let me know you're okay I can't help but to think all the awful things that could have happened to her oh thank god it's her Amanda opens the door and shuffles in finally finally she's back home I'm glad she's okay. What's up? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Oh. Uh, yeah. But now I think, now that I know she is okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer any of my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, whoops. Getting, I guess I didn't see this. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann. Huh? Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home 
an hour and a half after your curfew and I didn't and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I I was scared. You weren't responding and it was just it was just like when your dad I have to stop myself from tearing up. Oh, Dad, I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my hand in my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Mm. Uh. All right. I'm gonna go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. I thought what I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well. I'm sorry for freaking you out. You're an adult now. I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Mm. Team Godkin? Team Godkin. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. Already did. Yes. Bless you. Man, it scarfs down the eggs in, in the time it takes me to wash the pan. Okay. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Hmm. What? What's a dad book? Ugh. It's a social media platform. Wait. Hmm. What? What's a social media platform? Dad, <laughs> I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Hmm. Alright, I... I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Amanda spends the next couple minutes setting up my profile on Dadbook, which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. <sighs> Alright, Pops. We gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Oh! Huh. This looks fun. This looks fun, but I think it's gonna have to wait till next time. Uh... Things got a little, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess intense, but not, not necessarily between me and Amanda. I don't know. It's bit, being a parent isn't always like rainbows and sunshine. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. Make sure you're subscribed to stay up to date on all my gaming videos and to see more of, uh, Dream Daddy. So thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time.